Hey y'all, coming to you from the International Headquarters of Scotty DTV, but I was at the 2022 SEMA show and Mike Copeland had another hydrogen hot rod out there. This very cool 1964 Falcon I think y'all are going to like. Let me get the camera turned around and we'll take a quick look at it. Mike, thanks so much for giving me some time this morning, brother. Hey, Scotty, you know, I'm always here for you. I, do. I appreciate that. That means more to me than you'll ever know. Man, I am glad you showed up with this uh, classic, what, 60-something Falcon, right? 64, yep. What made you do a 64 Falcon? Well, so Falcons, uh, have. I've always wanted one. It's the first car I ever heard with open headers. Back in, uh, like, 64, my dad used to take me to the dealer that uh, he ran uh, on Saturdays with him. And I was in there. That dealer had, a, fat, had a, a, a Falcon that was their, like, own race car that they raced at Detroit Dragway. And they fired that thing up with open headers. And, man, I was hooked. So I've always wanted one. About a year and a half ago or so, I bought one friend of a friend and a really nice car and uh, it was just sitting in my barn so when we did the hydrogen truck and launched that uh you know thousands of people been reaching out to me and wanting hydrogen and lots of municipalities and bus companies all of that stuff overwhelming number of them were ford people and so that kind of set that maybe i should build a ford next and the opportunity came up to do this new Ford Coyote engine because it has direct and port injection. So we were able to advance the technology. So it all just lined up, drug it out of the barn, and the rest is kind of history. Did you make any changes to the car? Uh, the car's got a lot of changes, yeah. It was a really, really clean car, but it had a little rust in one quarter panel. Well, I knew I wanted to put big tires under it, so we took both quarters off of it, made wheel tubs. So it's got 14 inches of tub in the rear put that back on, filled some holes in. This was a, an actual uh, sprint, so it was their kind of sporty line. So it had some extra chrome and things like that. We filled in a few of those, got rid of some of that. But uh, as far as metal modifications, that and then changing the floor to fit the, uh, the Tremec TKX, that was about it on the body. Everything else in the car is new and done. I mean, we have uh, all TCI suspension. It's got their front where you eliminate the uh, the shock towers and put in their uh, control arm, kind of like a Mustang do, but not exactly. Got coilovers uh, that let us get a, a large engine compartment that we could put a Coyote in. In the rear, because I, I'm kind of known for abusing my stuff, so... When I talked to TCI about the rear suspension, they suggested I do their Mustang torque arm system. It requires a little modification to go under a Falcon, but uh, we did that. So it's got a full torque arm set up in it. Mosier 9-inch, of course, Eaton uh, differential, got a true track in it. It's just 31 spline because it's, it's only going to be a 500, 550 horsepower package. So we didn't need the big race stuff underneath it. But did, of course, the bare brakes got their uh, their Pro Plus system on it with 14 inch rotors, six piston calipers. All of that's done. You know, we we kind of always do the usual because we do drive them. You know, we coat the uh, bottom side of the car with lizard skin and that protects it and, and helps make the car quieter. We use cool it uh, thermotech inside on all the floor and all the panels it helps quieten that down and make the cars just feel so much more solid when you drive them you know we did a, a tremic tkx in this one from american powertrain same as we did in the truck i just love that five speed that thing will shift it at 8,000 rpm they rate them for 7,500 but we run them 8,000 and they'll shift so I like leaning on those levers. So well, well kind of it's fun. funny because, you know, you said they, they rate them at 7,500. We turn them at eight grand. Well, welcome to Copeland's world, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, if you send it to Arrington Performance, you're going to get back, hey, this is either good or it's not. Right. Yeah, well, you know, I've been doing this a long time, right? So, and uh, I've put a lot of parts in the scrap barrel through the years. So that's kind of how we select what we use, right, and, and what we sell to our customers. I don't just go out and grab stuff off the Internet or out of a catalog or anything like that. We test it, prove it, and make sure it works. Right on. Tell me, what color is it? Uh, the color is called Liquid Blue, the same color that in 2009 they re-released the Ford GT in. And it's a very unusual color because it takes 13 different colors to make it, plus three pearls. Holy cow. What's uh, that stuff cost a gallon? Um, 
it's really expensive. <laughs> 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 and, uh, I would think. So we took it a step further with this one. Exalta is the company that I went to for all the paint, and uh, it's actually a waterborne paint. You know, if you're going to build a car, an emission-free car, you, you should try and do that in as many of the systems as you can. And so we went to Exalta. They're kind of the leaders in the waterborne technology, and, and they wanted to work with us. And so we, we used their waterborne paint and did it. And, and I defy you to tell the difference. I mean, and you saw the car, right? I mean, and it just it's came out perfect. Uh, I used TMI for the seats. They make a really nice seat. This was a bench seat car. Initially, I wanted buckets. I used them. They did the front. They reupholstered the rear to match the front. The dashboard in the car, we CNC'd the entire dash insert. And Falcon's, the, the Sprint Falcon has a panel that goes all the way across the dash. And a friend of mine named Aaron Oberly owns a company called Michigan Machine Works. And I challenged him to take my idea and make it reality. So the entire dash is CNC. Classic instruments, gauges, Pioneer audio, kicker speakers. I mean, all of the all of the best stuff. Because I plan to drive this car, right? We're going to take this thing on power tour. We're going to drive it across the country. We're going to do lots of fun stuff with it. So I got a, uh, I did a tilt steering column in there so it's comfortable. GT Plus did a, a leather wrap wheel for me. And uh, it just, the, the car is so comfortable to sit in and drive. And that's important if you're going to spend hours in it. No, I think that that's important to mention is I don't know a build that you would have built that you didn't drive. Everything you build to drive. And most of it you build to beat the tar out of. Yeah, people don't, you know, even I, recently I saw a post, you know, my Rampage was back at SEMA right. in the Cook's Headers display. And even this year, after years of racing that thing all over the place, I still had somebody call it a show car that never gets driven pushed in and out of a truck (laughs) far from the truth as a matter of fact the uh, hydrogen truck was out at the optimum battery challenge at sema yeah we raced that in the in the ultimate streetcar invitational so it was the first ever internal combustion engine running on hydrogen to compete in a race series in north america how cool so we're really proud of that it did really well um Aaron, Aaron Oberly drove it for me, and uh, he did a phenomenal job. I was a little tied up doing interviews and talking about the Falcon, and I did a couple classes. I know you recorded one of them for me, the technical sessions at SEMA, and, and uh, so it, it, I stayed pretty busy, so Aaron got to drive the truck. So Awesome. Tell me about the technology. Uh, all right. So uh, in this... You know, when we burn hydrogen, we talked about this before, that if you use a naturally aspirated engine and you inject the hydrogen, it physically takes about 20% of the volume of the port to move the hydrogen into the cylinder. If you do direct injection, where we spray the fuel direct into the combustion chamber, you don't lose that power. You know, late model GMs are direct injected, coyotes are direct injected, a a number of, of vehicles, number of engines today are. So... We wanted to move into that technology, but we had an opportunity to take it one step further. So in addition to injecting the hydrogen right into the cylinder, the Coyote has a port injector that they use to to add some additional fuel in in high RPM applications and wide open throttle type situations. We converted that to water. Now we spray a finite mist of water, but what that does is it allows us to control the burn rate of the hydrogen. So it's just another step in control. By doing that, it lets us make about 10% more power on hydrogen than the engine did on gasoline. Direct injected engine, if it's properly calibrated on gasoline, the gasoline will never touch the piston before it ignites. So you get a, a, a more controlled burn. And remember in the past, we talked about flame travel and the size of the piston. Direct injected engines typically have like a cup in the top of the piston. And as you spray the fuel into that cup, it burns in that cup instead of all the way across the piston. And that lets them reduce emissions. In our case, because we're using hydrogen, we have the ability and and the fuel to burn at three times the rate. We use the water to more precisely control the time of that. So you get you get timing control by when you fire the injector. Now we get burn rate control by 
basically adding a little water and slowing down the burn of that hydrogen as it goes as it goes into that bowl. That's a big step. The other thing it does for us is because we have the ability to run more, to burn faster, we can raise the rev limiter. So in the case of our Coyote, uh, our rev limiter is at 8,000 RPM instead of 7,000 where the factory put it. Boy, you like moving that RPMs up, don't you? Well, you know, there's nothing <laughs> there's nothing better than the engine at full song. <laughs> yeah, there's always a point where the oil pan's not strong enough to hold all the parts in. But uh, the Coyotes, you know, they, they regularly turn them higher RPM. It's not, you know, if you look at their, like the factory stock versions that they race, they run those 10,500 RPM. Oh, right on. So... Yeah, so, but they run Hemi's at 9,500, but uh, the 8,000 is not a stretch at all for the engine, and uh, it just allows us to make more power. Man, more power is always awesome. Yeah, I, I'm a, a big fan of power. Right on. People want to follow you. They want to uh, keep up with what's going on with Arrington Performance and Hydrogen and Mike Copeland. What's the best way to do all that? Well, for the hydrogen stuff, it should be alive now. We've been battling a little bit. We got a new website, Arrington-Hydrogen.com. That's where you can go and get the uh, any of the information on our hydrogen stuff and what we're doing. And and people should stay tuned there because we have some really really wild stuff coming. We have a lot of things planned for next year that we'll be doing, and uh, and they'll be fun to watch. And uh, and we're gonna disprove some myths and some things people you know always want to say hydrogen can't do this or can't do that we're going to show and prove that uh, it can so that's errington-hydrogen.com shophemi.com is errington performances website not a lot about hydrogen there but there's you know all of our gen 3 hemi stuff and remember we don't just do hydrogen we build engines and parts and cars and all of that stuff in addition, they can go to diversifiedcreations.com, which is my other company, and that's a, a typical hot rod shop, and we do performance and off-road there. I mean, I, I I love going fast. I love doing this stuff, and, uh, you know, I want to make sure that it's around for – I want my grandson to be able to, to enjoy some of the cars that I enjoy. I think hydrogen's the way to do that. Right on. Brother, I always enjoy the time I get to spend with you. It's always amazing. Conversations we have always leave me thinking until the next time I see you. <laughs> uh, well, I'm happy to do it. So pretty quick here. We're going to be making some noise with a uh, Tahoe. Yeah, well, you know, I, <laughs> I that's one of them things that I sure appreciate, you know, all that you're doing and helping me on, and I don't want to push you or ask you about, but not just myself. I have a lot of fans out there, too, that are, um, yeah, they're very excited to think, and I tell people jokingly at this point, who knows, it may become reality, but jokingly, I said, listen, if Copeland can't make this thing reliable, I'm just going to take it out in the field and blow it up and make a video, <laughs> try to make some of my money back that way, because I really, Mike, take, you know, whatever it takes for you to do that, I really appreciate it, and yes, I am looking forward to making horsepower in that Yukon. Oh, yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah, Will Posey sent me all the information on it the other day. So good, good. I got all of that, and we're going through that. And uh, We'll have her on the dyno here pretty quick, and uh, we'll get any of the little issues straightened out, and we'll make some numbers with it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Awesome. And before I run, anything else you want to get out and anybody need to give a shout-out to before we go? Well, you know, I think it's important that, that – to say, and I, you've heard me say this a lot, I don't do this alone, right? I have I have a team, I, and, you know, I have a team of people that work for me at Arrington. I have a team of people that work for me at Diversified, and those those are, are super talented people that make as, every bit as much a commitment as I do to get this stuff done and, and get it out there. So, you know, Bosch has been on board, and they've been a great help. Uh, it just it, it takes a lot more than just one person to do any of this stuff yeah no good thing we all work together and man i am always again i'm always always appreciative when you give me some time well that's a two-way street i appreciate you and you know all your followers you guys you do a great job telling the story and uh, I, you know you did that that one on on who i am and, and uh, nobody's ever done that before and, and you can't believe how many people have come to me and talked about that so you have a huge group of people that follow what you do and, and uh, you do a great job with it 
Brother, I'll tell you, the only thing I claim to know is cool. And after sitting down and having a conversation or two with you, I was like, Mike Copeland is one of the coolest people in the world. And, you know, not just this cars, but people need to know this dude has been this way all of his life from since he's been five years old till now he's in his, what, 60s. And he's been doing yep. this very same thing, burning the hair on his legs and his arms only to make more horsepower and go faster. And, you know, that's my disease, and I don't want it cured, so we're going to keep doing it. Mike, I appreciate it, brother. I hope you have a good Thanksgiving. You too, my friend. So there you go, another hydrogen hot rod from Mike Copeland, a 1964 Ford Falcon 2022 SEMA show. Hope you all have enjoyed it. See ya! Hey y'all, make sure you subscribe to this channel and visit scottydtv.com for an easy way to search the hundreds of videos I have posted. Either click the link in the description or the one at the end of this video.